Hi guys, um, I hope you can hear me. So I'm not trying to be, um, you know, uh, paranoid or anything. Uh, I think this is extremely important that tests are available uh, and accessible to those who are experiencing, um, you know, symptoms and who are in vulnerable communities. I have uh, had a little bit of a situation because um, I've talked a little bit about this, but I haven't really gone full force. So I went to a baby shower in the containment zone area um, in Westchester, you know, over a week ago, probably 10 days at this point. And just prior to that, I had been on, I think like a total of like eight flights or something like that. And, you know, I was a little worried about being um, in contact with folks who had been in contact with anybody who had tested positive, especially in Westchester County. And um, it turns out I have, I have several friends now who have tested positive and I, you know, I was really concerned about getting on a plane, coming to Arizona to care for my mother who is a cancer patient. She's, um, she's doing great. Like she's, you know, she's, but she's immunocompromised. And so she needed some help and she, you know, need, she came to Arizona to her parents' house, um, which is unoccupied. And so I flew out here and I had talked to a bunch of different folks in New York State and New York City, the Department of Health, and they basically said, unless you're, you have symptoms, you know, you're less likely at that time, they said you're less likely to be as contagious if you don't have symptoms, which actually might be true, but we all know that people can be carriers without symptoms. And um, I'd say in the last like 48 hours, I've just been feeling a little off and run down and some of the symptoms I have, um, I don't, you know, I've, our, our thermometer broke and I can't get one now because they're all sold out. So I, in Arizona, um, you know, there aren't as many cases and they're, they're definitely overwhelmed. Um, without a doubt there, they lack testing. Uh, but I, had, I talked with a few specialists in the last 48 hours who advised me to come and get tested. And so I am now going, I'm on my way. Um, it was very difficult to kind of figure it all out. Everybody was extremely kind. All the healthcare workers have been super patient and helpful. And, you know, I think their concern is that I have been in contact with a lot of people. Even when I go out shopping, you know, I wear this mask um, and I wear gloves. I have gloves on, on this hand. I don't have it on the other hand yet. Uh, Anyways, and, and that I can potentially uh, transmit this to my mother who is immunocompromised and really to anybody. I mean, the grocery stores here are full of elderly right now who aren't wearing gloves, who aren't wearing masks. Nobody's wearing masks. I cannot believe, you know, it doesn't protect you, but obviously we know that it, it prevents the spread. And these masks in particular, we only have one of these. My uncle gave me because he does, he, he works on construction all the time. So he had it um, to protect from asbestos. So I'm on my way right now. I'm going to check in with you uh, shortly and give you some updates. I thought this would be important for the show is to show you just what the process is like uh, for those of you who haven't been, have had a chance to go through this. Now we've seen a lot of celebrities and, and basketball players and sports figures get tested. But what I've learned is in most of these cases, most of them, although it's probably getting a little out of control, um, at least in the initial phases with the NBA, it was because they were they were going from state to state. And in, in the first case, the NBA case, he was the first case in that state. So they had to kind of map it. Uh, I, you know, I don't think they would be testing me at this point after having many conversations with them if they didn't think um, it was worth testing. So I'm heading over there right now. They said I had a rush because they just got the shipment. All right, I'll check in shortly. Okay, so I'm back home now and... Uh, what I found out, I went to urgent care. Uh, I spoke to the woman at the front desk. She was extremely kind. And, you know, she said that people have been very hard on her in the last few days. And she like said that I was being really nice and not that it's about me, but I was kind of taken aback because I didn't feel like I was particularly like going out of my way to be nice. But she started to explain how, you know, people have just been pretty nasty in the last, um, few days. So if you do have to get tested, if you do have to be around healthcare workers, food service providers, um, you know, people who work at grocery stores, uh, delivery people, you know, understand that they're under a lot of stress and they're, and they're around people who are under a lot of stress. And it's just, um, you know, it's another aspect of virality, right? The viral effect of how people's, um, you know, their, their, 
their state of mind is affecting others. So anyways, I, I went to the front desk and she put me through the room. I had to sign all these documents. I had my mask on, my glo gloves, everything. And then she came back and she said, your, your insurance, we can't use your insurance here. So you're going to have to pay 150 bucks, not for the test, but because I'm at the urgent care facility. And so then she said to me, she's like, okay, tomorrow you can go. They're setting up a mobile clinic. They haven't announced it yet, but like, I'll make sure, you know, we have your information there because, you know, she, she basically said go there early in the morning. And so this is like, okay. So in New York, I made like 10 calls before getting on the plane because I didn't want to put my mom at risk. And then when I got here the last couple of days, I have been bounced around between so many different medical centers and everyone's been so sweet. Let me just reiterate that. It's, it's clearly everybody's trying to figure out how to manage this and, and build an operation overnight, essentially. And so I have been on calls with, I think, four nurses where I've told them the entire scenario and they've taken notes and called me back like the really kind nurse last night and then today I drove and it's really kind of far away I drove to basically the other side of town um to go to the urgent care center and there was nobody there in the waiting room which was you know interesting um and I guess tomorrow we'll see so I will I will loop back with you tomorrow okay I am here right now um about to pull up to the drive through testing and okay i gotta uh figure out what's going on here so i'm gonna leave this on you may not see me fully but just be just be aware i'm gonna put my mask on okay It says no pictures, no recording. So I'm gonna put this over here and hope that everybody hears me. Okay, so I just finished up um, getting tested and I turned the camera off for the part where I had to speak to them um, and get swabbed. They basically took this swab and they put it up my nose, like really high up into my nasal cat, nasal cat. <laughs> all the way up there um yeah it's the it was not comfortable my nose started bleeding a little bit but everybody was really kind it was the first person in line at eight o'clock um and they're gonna get back to me they said probably they said it could be as long as seven days um but they think most likely 24 to 48 hours they just started testing here this is a new site that they set up um so we will see but i as you heard, I told them all the symptoms I've been having, although I don't feel bad, I feel fine. I feel, I've just had like, you know, a lot of the symptoms in different ways. Uh, the only thing that I haven't had is a cough, a dry cough, which seems to be a big part of it. But I, I think because it's Arizona um, and it's a little early, I was able, and the tests have now been released, I was able to kind of get through and they didn't block me in the way that they did in New York where they were like, unless you're basically like, healing over and part of the, the vulnerable community, you're not gonna be able to get a test. So it might end up being at, at um, getting to that point here. Um, my concern is, is being around my mother who has cancer. So otherwise I would just stay home and not waste a test. So uh, we will see, that was my journey. Uh, next week I'll let you know if I tested positive or not. So a little update, uh, yesterday I went to the uh, urgent care after I had been on, I don't know, with like six different healthcare professionals over the last 48 hours, trying to figure out how I would be tested. Um, I was cleared through the process every single time and then they'd have somebody call me back and then they'd say, okay, call this line and schedule an appointment and then it would be the wrong place. And they'd say, no, no, no we don't do it. Then these people do it. Um, you know, it's understandable. This is this is chaos. People don't know where the tests are going to be delivered. Uh, they don't know how many tests they're going to have, how often they'll get them. So I, I had an appointment yesterday at the urgent care and they ran out of tests, but they said, if you can schedule another appointment later in the afternoon, we might have tests. And so um, I called them 20 minutes before my second appointment and, and they had tests and they said, run over here. 
uh, pretty quickly because we don't have many left. And they brought me through and they're extremely generous with their time and energy. But unfortunately, uh, my insurance, because it's an out of state New York, New York City insurance, New York State insurance, I wasn't able to take the test. And so then they told me, uh, if you leave first thing in the morning and get to the Banner Health Facility emergency room, they have mobile tents set up. And uh, that is, is the plan.